Hey guys, welcome to the video, and here today we're going to cover a couple of important things. Number one being the CFW stuff, 482 CFW more specifically. Um, two new 482 CFWs dropped today, so we are going to uh, touch base with those. And the majority of the video will be the whole 481, 482 exploit thing. Not the IDPS dumper, but the actual exploit. Habib has released more information, and so we're going to kind of decipher that and talk about that a little bit. So that's going to consume the majority of time in the video. I also want to apologize that this video is going to have incredibly crappy editing. That's because I was adding more things, but in the end, it just made the video drag on and I found that most of those things were just kind of being miscellaneous stuff that I wanted to throw in there. I only kept what was really important and uh, and yeah, so the video is going to be really bad, uh, poorly edited, but um, what was left behind is the important stuff and it's cohesive where you'll be able to understand it without a problem. Um, I'm also going to be very busy with the holidays, family, work, and just life in general, so I'm not going to be in the comments as much as I have been over the last few days, but I got a lot of stuff going on. And now and then, um, you know, I'm going to be checking in. If something major, though, pops off regarding 482, um, you know, CFW, um, anything major in the PS3 underground scene, of course, I'm going to throw something together and post it up here for you guys, as well as continuing my tutorials with emulation, which I'm going to start that soon, as well as, you know, that big PS3 tutorial I was doing, the Mana Guns review, and all that stuff. The next thing I want to do is thank all of my subscribers. We hit 3,000 today. Actually, here it's showing my 1,000 uh, uh, subs video, which is funny, but um, last year and uh, um, black friday we had 70 subs at some point i thought hey if i hit 500 in like a couple of years maybe three years that would be cool never thought i'd get to 3,000 in a year uh, to me that's a pretty big deal that 3,000 people are insane enough to want to pay attention uh, to the stuff i have to say thank you very much i appreciate it sincerely from the bottom of my heart um especially those of you who have been there that have been there since the beginning and um for all the newcomers, you know, welcome aboard. So enjoy the video, guys. Sorry about the bad editing, and I will keep you updated. I'll see you on the next one. All right, so as far as the news uh, concerning Rebug, it's pretty much just, uh, it's not really bad news, but it's not really great news either. It's just pretty much kind of neutral. Um, we're just going to have to wait uh, because as last reported by Juni, um, they're just waiting on some stuff, and they said it may be a while, you know, um, so um, Junie stated that uh, it could be a little while before we see uh, the new rebug. No specific time frame was given, so if you're on Kex rebug and you're spooking to a 482 and it's working for you, you may want to stay there, or try a different 482 CFW if you want, up to you. But anyway, um, yeah, it's pretty much just the waiting game from here on out. Uh, Ferrix 482 CFW has been released, and it comes in two flavors. You have the one with Cobra and the one without, just plain Jane Standard Edition Vanilla Kex uh, CFW. This one is also, of course, Kex as well. Uh, if you're going to try these out, make sure you install them over any CFW that is 482 or less. Make sure that you don't have any spoofers that are running so make sure you disable them before you do so and I would advise to also make sure you disable any plugins you have running like a Cobra plugin or webman uh, any of those things that you you know turned on in the toolbox um, and then go ahead and install it and see how you like it if you want totally up to you um, is there an advantage of this over Kex um, you know rebug that's being spoofed to 482 I really don't think so, and personally, nothing against Ferrix because he makes good stuff. But um, you know, I'm gonna stick with my spoofed rebug um, until you know they uh, come out with the updated one. But it's really up to you if you guys want to try it out or not. If you do, let us know in the comment section so that way other people can know um, if you ran into any issues. Usually, his firmware is pretty solid, and if there's ever anything wrong, any bugs or whatever, they're usually you know kind of minor stuff. 
and he released a, a, a revision to fix uh, the issues. All right, let's move on. All right, guys, so the last thing that we're going to talk about here is the exploit. Now, it seems like this update did not affect the 481 exploit. So officially what the devs have said is just that, that it looks like it didn't affect the exploit, but to hold off um, just in case and until they can confirm it. All right, so um, at least that's the last uh, what I read. Um, this was posted on the 9th, this, this whole exploit article deal, and uh, I think I read it on the 10th, possibly the 11th, and I could have sworn that when I read it, this was not here, because when I came to it now, this immediately stood out. Now, this was last edited on the 13th, and so I think that they posted this after I had read everything. So that's why I, I barked at some people and jumped on their backs, because I thought that this was a rumor that would you know, that had no um, uh, no facts behind it, and it was just something that was getting out of control, and I was like, go with the devs, make sure you, you read what they say, and only believe what they say and whatnot. So it was posted there, so I want to say I'm sorry for anybody who I, like, you know, barked at <laughs> for, for posting that stuff up. Obviously, this was here and was posted after I had initially read the article. Now, moving on... Uh, Habib, who I didn't know was working on this, shed a lot of light on what this is and what it's going to do. Now, apparently, this will allow you to install CFW directly over OFW as long as you're on 41, possibly on 482. Um, but it will work as such only on PS3s that were already jailbreakable to begin with. In other words, PS3s that were able to be flashed, like let's say with an E3 flasher, right, that you can install uh, a jailbreak on, these are the PS3s that will benefit the most from the exploit, or I should say benefit at all from this exploit. So basically all fat PS3s, all of them, okay, and about half of the, su uh, half of the slims that are out there. So the same ones that were able to be jailbroken before, that's what the exploit will work for. If it wasn't able to be jailbroken before, then what's going to happen is, is that this exploit still may be able to allow you to install homebrews onto these systems, including super slims, and the, these homebrews can get you very close to CFW. Or they may find a workaround where they can uh, get it to install CFW onto these systems that weren't jailbreakable before. I'm going to put a link to this chart. Um, basically, all the FATs were jailbreakable, and any PS3 Slim made in 2010 or older. So if you want to look up the dates on NTSC uh, PS3 Slims, you can look here. All right, as long as it says 2010 or older, you'll be okay. The month is irrelevant. If you have a PAL type 1 or a PAL looking type 1 where it has a date code instead, you can just look here on the chart on the date codes. Uh, but one of the things that may be easier is that I will put a link in the description to this video that I made a while back. This video talks about which systems can be jailbroken and which cannot, and it goes into more detail um, because, anyway, these are the ones that um, you know the exploit will work for so you may want to watch that video in the description of that video is a small app a minimum uh, version check um, a little program and I shouldn't say it's an app it's a little deal where it works kind of like an update you put it on the USB stick stick it into your PS3 and it will display on the screen what the lowest firmware your PS3 can go down to is and as long as the firmware that it displays is 356 or lower your PS3 will be uh, jailbreakable and will be able to take advantage of this exploit. Now, all the others, all Super Slims and the other, uh, you know, 3000 series uh, Slim PS3s and the other ones that can't be jailbroken, um, yeah, again, you this exploit still may get you to install homebrews um, or they may find the workaround so that you can install um CFW onto these systems. So they've shed more light on it. They were a little bit more clear now, updated us. So that's where we stand. So I know this might be disappointing for some of you, but let's keep hopeful that these will be able um, to at least get homebrew installed on them, which that seems like it is 
um, very feasible. And then from there, hopefully we can get it close to C of a W. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching the video. I appreciate it as always. Thanks again to the 3,000 subs. Much love going out to you and these developers for the amazing work that they do. I will see you on the next one. Keep in mind, I'm going to be really busy, um, but I will check in every once in a while. And if something big pops off regarding you know anything 482, I will go ahead and I will let you know. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.